Hello, my name is Jorge Luis Chavez. I am a uh, current public history graduate student at Oklahoma State uh, University with the history department. I'm also a, an assistant curator of education with the Oklahoma History Center. Today I will be um, presenting over a, a, a Mexican Oklahoma history, um, a brief look into the modern history of a uh, Mexican American community in Oklahoma City. Oklahomans have always imagined themselves as a series of images, the sturdy farmer, the oil man, the cowboy. These, character, these caricatures have held as on as popular images of what an Oklahoman is. However, these images do not acknowledge or demonstrate the full reality as to what an Oklahoman ever was. While not, while not, while not full reality, there are certain truths to this statement. Oklahoma does in fact have a thriving agricultural and oil-based economies that often influence and shift Oklahoma policy, all while the cowboy has always been an American staple that is seen all, across, all over the state and across the nation. Unfortunately, these focused realities tend to overshadow and dismiss the many other realities that also compose the Oklahoman image. W. David Braid and Danny Gold in their Oklahoma, a history provide a seemingly extensive and thorough history of Oklahoma from as early as possible up until the deadly terrorist attack on the Alfred Murrah building, federal building in the spring of 1995. The attack on the Alfred Murrow Federal Building shattered and forever changed Oklahoma, but it did not change the people of Oklahoma. Oklahomans across racial, religious, and cultural backgrounds united together and demonstrated the resilience and strength to rebuild stronger than ever. However, both authors were short in fulfilling their goal of providing an overarching and complete history of Oklahoma and its people. Their monograph is missing the presence of a greatly influential demographic that has truly altered the course of Oklahoma history. Mexicans and Mexican Americans were surprisingly absent from the narrative of, of Oklahoma history. As stated by the authors, the story of Oklahoma has always been the story of people who have had to confront changes, most of which were not their own making. Steadily, they have met the challenges as best they could, shaping what they could alter, accepting what they could not, and always trying to do whatever they had to be done to maintain human dignity. Theirs has been a story of cruelty and of justice, of greed and of glory, of folly and of wisdom. This has, this has been shaped by saints and scoundrels, by genius and by fools, by malcontents and visionaries. In other words, it is a universal story of humanity, composed of the universal element of all history, humanity itself. With such profound and encompassing statement of people that make up Oklahoma, it is crucial to provide an extensive and thorough history of Oklahoma that fully demonstrates the complex and immense nuanced nature. The Mexican and Mexican American community has existed since Oklahoma's statehood. Unfortunately, their legacy is often omitted from many of the Oklahoma historical narratives taught across the state. People of, of Mexican descent have been active participants in the state's development since the beginning. Similarly, the Oklahoma Mexican and Mexican American community is often omitted from the, the current national Mexican and Mexican American narratives too. As such, the Mexican uh, American community of Oklahoma City provides an opportune perspective into the, uh, the Mexican American community building and development outside of the, the American Southwestern borderlands. This study hopes to present a concise historical narrative of the Mexican and Mexican American communities of Oklahoma as it grew, developed in, in the late 19th century. It is crucial to recognize the regional distinction of Oklahoma Mexican and Mexican American communities and their development as they faced many obstacles and, ch and challenges experienced by Mexican and Mexican American communities across the nation. When speaking of Mexican and Mexican American communities, this study will mostly use them interchangeably due to the direct relationship they hold with one another. While many individuals retain their identity uh, as Mexican, second and third generation uh, Mexicans re often refer to themselves as Mexican American, but hold strong ties to their cultural and national heritage. In, in terms of scope, this study will largely be focusing on, Oklahoma, on the Oklahoma City Mexican and Mexican American community, 
from the early 19th century, early, uh, early 1970s leading into the end of the millennium. These restrictions worked to set a clear boundary of discussion as, as much of the early organizing began to take place in the 1970s and began to flourish in the 1980s and continued to expand in the 1990s. Similarly, this study will not delve deeply into many other uh, equally important and influential communities that also compose the larger Hispanic community of Oklahoma, particularly in Oklahoma City. With over 80% of uh, Mexicans self-identifying as Catholic, the Catholic Church plays a fun fundamental and central role in the development of the community. Oklahoma City has even has a direct connection to the Mexican Revolution and the found and in the foundation of Our Lady of Mount Carmel and the Descalade Carmelite province of uh, St. Therese Catholic uh, Monastery and Church. However, this study will focus on secular organizations and their efforts to, to the community as they as there is a separate nuanced discussion when studying the Catholic faith and its impact on millions of Mexicans and Mexican Americans. Similarly, Oklahoma's overall Hispanic community holds tremendous clout and influence in Oklahoma and deserves an extensive and thorough study of its own. As such, this paper, this paper's focus and core argument revolve the Mexican, Mexican and Mexican American involvement in American community as they work to organize and become self-sufficient along other um, alongside other Oklahoma communities in the late 20th century. As for resources, this study will heavily depend on local newspapers, census records, existing historical narratives on Oklahoma and Mexican and Mexican American communities, alongside personal histories pulled from the Oklahoma History Center to properly inform and showcase the Mexican American community as it developed through the late 20, 20th century. Local newspapers will inform much of this story due to the limited resources available about Mexican, about the Mexican and Mexican American community. Local bilingual uh, newspapers in particular will serve to provide an insider's perspective that cannot always be seen when studying the larger popular newspapers of the area. These bilingual newspapers also rely on relay uh, or rely on news agencies other than the Associated Press, such as a Hispanic Link, which provides articles and stories that are written, often written in Spanish, and cover topics closely related to issues many, many in the Oklahoma community face. Hispanic Link was created in 1979 and is based out of Washington, D.C. to better serve Spanish-serving individuals across the United States, stay better informed and updated on local and national news stories. Governmental records such as, as the census will provide an insight on the population size that can be used alongside newspapers. Governmental records such as the census will provide insight on, on into population sizes that can be used alongside newspapers and certain immigration laws to provide a better insight into political involvement by the community. For a community that has historically been ignored on the political stage. These will provide insight and further demonstrate the key obstacles that stagnate the progress of the Mexican Americans living in Oklahoma. Existing historical narratives will provide supplemental information that may add context or serve as a method of comparison among Mexican and Mexican American communities across the US. Similarly, the personal histories will provide a direct context that, pro that provide both cases and exceptions to the larger trends that have been seen when observing the communities. One of the earliest studies of the Mexican and Mexican American community in Oklahoma was uh, the University the University of Oklahoma Press's Newcomers to a New Land series that originally published in 1980. This 10 book series sought to describe and analyze the history of major ethnic groups that have further demonstrated the rich and diverse nature of Oklahoma history that are often missing from the larger narratives. From Germans to Italians, this series further complicates the idea of what an Oklahoman was. One such book, Michael Smith's Mexicans in Oklahoma, is, is still one of the only generalized studies to, tru to truly discuss and dive into the rich history of the Mexican and Mexican American community in Oklahoma. Smith's concise narrative demonstrates the steady 
and continuous growth of the community as more and more migrants began to enter the state as early as, 19, as, as 1907 and earlier. Smith provides an excellent introduction to the early community as it began to steadily grow as the, as the 20th century progressed. Using census and population records, newspaper articles, in addition to an extensive, extensive oral histories, Smith was able to piece together the nuanced narrative of how thousands of Mexican migrants and later Mexican Americans made Oklahoma their home while continually fostering a sense of community that came to flourish and grow past the 1980s. The late 20th century saw an incredible growth in prominence and socioeconomic clout from the Mexican and Mexican American community that has not yet been fully ex uh, explored sufficiently. On the national stage, the Mexican and Mexican American narrative has also seen tremendous development as social and cultural histories have begun to truly take hold in, in, the, late 19, in the late 20th and early 21st century. Published in 1993, George J. Sanchez, Becoming Mexican-American, Ethnicity, Culture, and Identity in Chicano, Los Angeles, 1990 to 1945, provides an ideal introduction to the study of Mexican and Mexican-Americans in, in the United States. Sanchez summarizes the established historiography of the Chicano and Mexican-American historians, as many have focused on culture and ethnicity as cornerstone of the identity, of, of many identity minor of many minority groups that reside in a host community. According to Sanchez, there is never a sole unchanging identity as an individual and community, as individual and community obstacles and challenges affect and influence individuals differently. But the retention of culture and identity can be attributed to class and racial segregation enacted on the Mexican and, Mex Mexican and Mexican American communities living within the US. Similarly, Sanchez highlights the scholarly notions of transcreation as a method of describing the community and cultural, cultural development among Mexican American communities. This can be traced to deeply this, this can be traced to the deeply complex nature of the Mexican imagined uh, national community that, that was challenged during the Mexico's revolution in 1910. Mexico's national community is incredibly cultural incredibly culturally diverse based on racial and regional factors that have presided since Spanish colonialism. Incidentally, the Mexican Revolution and its origins prompted the increased migration northward into the, into the US in the early 20th century. With such a theoretical and conceptual foundation, Sanchez explores the origins of the Chicano community in Los Angeles and how Mexican communities would transition into Mexican Americans as the community grew and adapted to the American setting. Over 2,000 miles away, Gabriela F. Ar Ar Arredondo explores the components based in uh, relation to social, material, and cultural conditions at specific moment in the, exp in the experiences of, of Mexicans in the Windy City. Arredondo was able to do this due to the racial form formation theory theorizing through racial formation theorizing in the frameworks of Michael Omi, Howard Wilnant, and Martha Hodes, as she uses their workings of race, which refer to the practices and process of racial ca categorization and stratification. Using this perspective, Arredondo is able to determine and acknowledge the individual differences of the Mexican community while understanding the overarching social dynamics that influence their interactions within and without, uh, within and out of their community. Interwar Chicago, 1916 to 1939, itself be, uh, being a key historical position in which Mexico's revolution drew an influx of Mexicans into Chicago. Similar to the history of Mexicans in Oklahoma, scholars have only recently began to expand past the southwestern borderlands of the US. While this region does have extensive and rich history, other regional areas have often been overlooked due to the different differences in proximity to Mexico and its population density early on. By expanding outward and past the borderlands, other forms of community development further outline and complicate many of the existing narratives that revolve the, around the Southwestern borderlands. 
As Arredondo states, Mexicans have lived in Chicago as far back as World War I, but only in the late 20th century have scholars began to truly delve into the established and establish the Chicago narrative of Mexican and Mexican Americans as they truly impact and influence the larger communities while often omitted from the leading narratives. This stems from the distance, the distinct Chicago flavor of Mexican, Mexicanidad. Mexican nationalism came about and related more towards post-revolutionary events in Mexico than the Southwestern borderlands of, um, than the South, Southwestern borderlands Mexican American focus on creating a space for themselves. These distinct trajectories can be associated to the fact that Mexicans were unable to form a significant demographic, con demographic concentration like seen in the borderlands. Over 1600 miles from Chicago, but only 500 away from Los Angeles, Linda Gordon's great Arizona orphan abduction provides a stark contrast to the previous works. Gordon focuses on the turn of the century, Morency and Clifton mining area in, in Arizona as Mexican Anglo relations take an unprecedented, unprecedented and turbulent direction as a result of the Mexican, Me Mexican community accepting white uh, orphans from New York. Gordon is able to brilliantly weave a breathtaking narrative retelling narrative retelling of the orphan abduction while also recreating and analyzing the society and communities which inhabited the Morency Clifton mining area. This Arizona story was all but forgotten. But Jordan states, um, this Arizona story was all but forgotten. But as Gordon states, it provides simultaneous universal and local knowledge. That provides great insight into the multi-ethnic working class communities in rural Southwest, the Southwestern borderlands at the turn of the century. Gordon does not only solely focus on the Mexican community, but also the Anglo community and how each developed separately while simultaneously influencing and altering each other. Gordon also focused on a great deal on women and their efforts in shaping their communities as well as the protection of their homes. By highlighting the efforts of, the Mex uh, of Mexican women to foster and create a sense of community, it provides great insight into the early rural society that resulted from mining boom that attracted, the, in, that attracted in hopes of prospering in an American Southwest in the 19. By highlighting the efforts of Mexican women to foster and create a sense of community, it provides great insight into the early rural society that resulted from a mining boom which attracted uh, many in hopes of prospering in the American Southwest in the early 1900s. An extremely re uh, recent novel by Aaron E. Sanchez, Homeland, Ethnic Mexican Belonging Since 1900, takes an intellectual historical perspective to better understand the sense of home and belonging within the Mexican American community of the Southwestern borderlands. Sanchez mostly focuses on Texas but acknowledges the transnational framework of, be, uh, of, the being, of being Mexican in the United States during the 20th century. In pursuing an in intellectual perspective, Sanchez is able to redefine the concept of citizenship and belonging from, the from a political identity to a concept of relationship and responsibilities. With the context of the Mexican-American involvement during both world wars and other forms of civic involvement, Sanchez, with the context of Mexican American involvement during both world wars and other civic involvement, other forms of civic involvement, Sanchez argues that the Mexican Americans developed their own sense, their own concept of citizenship and belonging instead of merely accepting the larger trends of the world around them. In doing so, he is able, he is challenging the established notion that only privileged white male scholars dominate the intellectual narrative while ethnic peoples are regulated to experiences. Given educated scholars inherently hold status, every person thinks and engages with intellectual concepts. This framework and intellectual perspective give this study yet another lens to view and seek to understand the Mexican American community as it grew and developed into a prominent sect of Oklahoma's community. The Mexican American historiography is vast and varied due to the very nature of 
of, uh, of the Mexican and Mexican American communities. Depending on the region, the communities have their unique development due to each community's set, unique set of challenges and obstacles that shape and guide how, how these communities develop. While all Mexican and Mexican American communities vary, there's common trends that have always persisted regardless of, of region or time. Strong racial and class discrimination often stand as leading obstacles that all communities must face, especially in moments of steady or increased population size. However, the civil rights movement of the 1960s greatly influenced and empowered Mexican and Mexican American communities all across the United States and Oklahoma was no different. As the Mexican and Mexican American community continued to grow at an increasing rate after 1970, more and more community groups began to, to take crucial leadership roles within the community. These organizations and community groups range from political to religious, but all sought to promote social, economic, and political growth while maintaining strong cultural ties to Mexico while in Oklahoma. As early as 1971, the Oklahoma Mexican and Mexican American community was beginning to make their voices heard and their message understood. As seen in the Sunday, May 30th, 1971 article, Mexican Americans uniting to solve varied problems the, um, of the Oklahoman demonstrates. This article is one of the earliest instances in which the Oklahoman mentions and acknowledges the Mexican American community as they are beginning to unite and address common issues they face. Abel Valdez firmly asserted, one problem is that we're not recognized. Most Oklahomans have never seen a Mexican. This sense of obscurity and sense of voicelessness was felt and observed throughout the community. Following the civil rights movement and, and the steady growth of the Chicano movement, Oklahoma Mexican and Mexican Americans began to, take, uh, to come together and openly express themselves as a method of elevating their voice to be heard. Aldez and other community leaders also mentioned cycles of poverty due to limited educational resources that prevented economic development. In, in hopes of ending such a vicious cycle, these early leaders began to turn away from Mexican, the Mexican individualistic norm and instead sought power and unity in numbers. Aldez was even called a troublemaker who was making, who's rocking the boat. By rocking the boat for the first time, Oklahomans were exposed to, to the educational and economic disparities among fellow Americans, Oklahomans. Schools rarely provide linguistic support for students who could not speak English. And as the older students would near graduation, uh, but would drop out prior, were often forgotten with little to, little to no effort made to reinstate them. This cycle of poverty held a strong hold on the community, but in towns like Lawton, progress was being made. Sue Columbus of uh, Lawton, um, began to organize fellow Mex Mexican Americans to provide scholarships for students seeking higher education. She asserted, if we can help one another, outside help will not be needed. That mentality of self-growth and self-help within the community was a leading force early on that guided many in the community. Growth in leadership and community involvement was becoming more prominent as the community continued to organize and work together towards addressing issues that continued to hold them back. Their voices were beginning to break ground and by 1970, the Mexican American community gained further public attention in the article, a look at the city's Mexican Americans in which Thomas McCarthy an Oklahoman reporter provides an overview of the current Mexican American community. From Spanish language movies to new Spanish radio stations, the growth and influence was picking up momentum as the population size continued to grow. During the 1970 census over 10,000 Mexican Americans made Oklahoma City Metro their, their home. But by 1975, the estimate has grown, was as high as 16,000. 16, such a drastic change in population, uh, the issue, with such a uh, drastic change in population, the issue of illegal immigration was coming, was becoming increasingly troublesome to, as, as officials began to see a growth in illegal, and as an illegal flood of Mexicans in, into the United States. As pointed out by local by a local uh, Mexican restaurant owner, people, regardless of na nationality and ethnicity, would cross any border or boundary to feed their feed their hungry family. A sentiment only many Oklahomans were familiar with, 
following the devastating effects of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. However, now Oklahoma uh, was seen as the land of opportunity and similar to how Oklahoma, and, and a sentiment many Oklahomans are familiar with following the devastating effects of the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl. However, now Oklahoma was seen as the land of opportunity, similar to how California was seen decades prior. In addition, the family bond was and still acts as a cornerstone of Mexican American identity. As such, Mexicans would often migrate into Oklahoma because of family or friends that would serve as an initial support system. This family support system was extended into including non-family members due to the relatively close proximity of the growing community. A, a local priest uh, commented that he estimated about 4,000 of the city's Mexican and Mexican Americans lived between I-35 and May and Reno and Southwest 44th, an area that is still predominantly Hispanic to this day. Alongside continued migration into the state, many Mexican Americans were already sec were already second or third generation Oklahomans. As the as second and third generation Mexican Americans, many of these individuals were able to benefit from increased familiarity with with English, with the English language and understanding of Oklahoma society that allowed them to advance past their parents and into the and into the growing Mexican American middle class. This growth in the middle class facilitated the foundation of many early clubs and organizations such as Dr. Edward Esperanza's Mexican American Cultural Center, which was active as early as 1974. The Mexican American Cultural Center consolidated nine of the early organizations such as the center's chairman stated, they, government or per, uh, private benefactors would rather deal with one organization than nine clubs. This tactic worked. The center was able to raise over $20,000 to invest towards their physical neighborhoods and community. By 1978, there were 10 groups under the center's umbrella and by 1990, the center was renamed the Hispanic Cultural Center in hopes of attracting more Spanish speaking individuals. Similarly, La Puerta de Oro was the first senior, uh, senior, center, senior center to provide services fully in Spanish, all in Oklahoma, in all of Oklahoma. La Puerta de Oro Senior Center developed from one person's strong desire to help their community. Anita Martinez was, an instrument, was instrumental to the foundation of La Puerta de Oro in 1975 and served as its director until retirement in 2005. Anita Martinez was seen as a pillar in the Hispanic community who deeply cared for her community, in partic particularly the elderly. Anita, alongside her husband and daughter, worked tirelessly uh, in order to maintain the center early on. The center aimed to provide necessary services for Oklahoma, Oklahoma City's growing elderly population. Jesse Martinez, Anita's husband, would drive the bus and that would take the members from place to place. As a cultural hub, the members would partake in various festi festivals and cultural events uh, throughout Oklahoma City. Anita y los viejitos, made, made up of various uh, center members alongside Anita and her husband, uh, as a traditional Mexican band, they would go to represent Oklahoma when they performed at the Smithsonian's Folklife Festival. Alongside serving as a cultural hub, Anita would provide basic English lessons in hopes of improving communication be between the elderly, elderly and their doctors. Even though Spanish was a powerful uniting force, English was still the only commonly used language. English would allow them to maintain agency even in their advanced age. Anita dedicated her time and efforts to serving the community. In 19, 1998, she and her husband were awarded the 15th annual Oklahoma Human Rights Commission Award and the Governor's Arts Award in 1999. In addition to local, local clubs, national organizations also began to look, into, look at Oklahoma City as possible regional bases. The League of United Latin American Citizens ha has been a leading national organization whose sole mission is to uplift and promote social and economic growth while empowering communities politically, as well as ensuring protection of civil rights. 
By 1979, new chapters were being formed in Oklahoma City and statewide. As initial organizing and foundational work began to take form during the 1970s, it was during the 1980s that Spanish, language, Spanish as a language began to a, became a pillar for unification within the Mexican community. Spanish language media quickly became an ideal platform for Mexican and Mexican American communities. Media outlets served as multi-purpose platforms that allowed businesses and organizations to reach further than ever before. One of, one of the earliest instances of Spanish language newspaper publication came from the Hispanic Cultural Center. The center had published a short bilingual newspaper that initially served as the center's newsletter, but never gained much traction. In 1983, Miguel Milanes, the assistant director of the center, hoped to reestablish La Voz as a fully functioning bilingual newspaper. La Voz aimed to address the lack of reliable sources of localized news and information. While La Voz never gained much momentum to becoming its own operating newspaper, it set the example for other media outlets to follow. In 1985, La Tremenda served as the first Spanish language radio station to broadcast within the state. This was not only a great step towards recognition and acceptance of the Mexican American community, but also for organizations and groups that gain, gained an easily accessible platform to reach thousands simultaneously. Local businesses began to capitalize and plat, uh, and perf, uh, Local businesses began to capitalize on the platform and reach their targeted audiences. As Spanish was still reluctantly accepted among the larger community, businesses offering bilingual services were able to gain customers. Similarly, El Nacional de Oklahoma became the first fully functioning Spanish and English bilingual local newspaper in Oklahoma City in 1988. With its first edition, El Nacional was quick to demonstrate its commitment to the community and its betterment. The first few issues showcased articles and advertisements that were directly targeted towards the Spanish language community. Such articles revolved new organizational leaders and their mission statements for their direction and vision of such organizations. El Nacional was part of um, the Hispanic Link news agency that distributed English and Sp Spanish um, Spanish language articles across the nation. Hispanic Link allowed for Spanish language communities to maintain a sense of awareness on national news. Advertisements highlighted businesses' bilingual capabilities alongside their invitation and acceptance of the growing Mexican American community. Restaurants, which had steadily gained popularity prior to the 1980s, were among the first to advertise and take advantage of, the, of this new platform. Local restaurants and small businesses often provided discounts and special offers in hopes of expanding their clientele. Schools and educational programs also sought to use these new platforms to advertise and recruit students. The Universal Technical Institute was among the first trade school to advertise bilingual classes for welding. Welding classes prevent, uh, presented many a great opportunity for many to develop their personal skills and gain a competitive edge on the job market. In the second issue of El Nacional, Diego Amador, a welding class instructor, interviewed few members from his class. The only woman in the class stated, para mí todas las profesiones son buenas, which translates, for me, all professions are good. This sentiment was widespread as many Mexican migrants into Oklahoma just wanted to make a living wage for their families. Self-betterment for one situation became a driving force for the community uh, as well as proper education. Um, Metrotech and various other technical schools alongside universities, alongside universities began to address, to advertise on uh, newspapers as well. Immigration was, in, was becoming an increasingly sensitive topic by the 1980s. Nationally, in the 1980 Hispanic population had reached over 14 million. As seen with previous waves of immigration, there was a severe pushback and debate. An answer was achieved in 1986. The Immigration Reform and Control Act passed and established a path for citizenship for thousands of Mexicans and other uh, undocumented individuals living within the United States. This bipartisan legislation offered the opportunity for Mexicans to become legalized residents and eventually US citizens. 
This amnesty, as many refer to it, would lead to further would lead to further increase to a further increase in the Mexican American population size in the state. Oklahoma's state applications would rank among the top ten of all states. This was large. This was due to the largely fluid, undocumented population that began to grow in the previous decade. As many gained citizenships, they quickly began to utilize the 1965 Immigration Act, which allowed them to sponsor family members for legal residency. It is important to address that the lived experiences of individual, individuals do not, who underwent the pro, process to gain residency and later citizenship through IR, um, IRCA. Saul Aguilar, it is important to address the lived experiences of individuals who underwent the progress process to gain residency and later on citizenship. Saul Aguilara first, first came into the U.S. illegally with the aid of a coyote, a human trafficker who aids immigrants entering the U.S. in 1979. He, like many others, came into, into Oklahoma in search of a better life for his family and relatives that lived in the city. Starting off at a, uh, at a restaurant and then moving on to construction, Saul worked for over nine months before he was pulled over. Saul admitted his undocumented status and was later arrested and deported. Within four months, Saul was back in the United States. However, now he had his family. Years later, when the IRCA passed, Saul was able to use his work experience and his previous work experience qualified him uh, per IRCA guidelines. The IRCA allowed for Saul and his family to live in peace and prosper in the United States and achieve more than he could have expected. This is just one of thousands of stories just within Oklahoma. Nationally, over 2.7 million applicants were approved through the R IRCA. However, this act did, did have adverse effects on portions of community who did not qualify. The IRCA granted path to citizenship for individuals living within the United States prior to 1982, not after. This created an obstacle for many who continued to migrate into the United States. Published in 1998, the impact, the impact of the IRCA on job opportunities and earnings of Mexican Americans and Hispanic American workers from the International Migrations Review noted a decrease in desirable, desirability of hiring and training additional undocumented appearing personnel. While the IRCA provided a path for citizen for millions, it also increased enforcement resources and funding for the Immigration and Naturalization Service Department, as well as outlawed and penalized to uh, and penalize those who hired undocumented individuals. Um, racial discrimination began to rise as well as um, as Mexican American, as Mexican undocumented workers were more likely to be targeted and apprehended by INS agents. As the 1980s came to an end, the Mexican community, Mexican American community had grown through tremendous obstacles, but continued to move forward and continued to serve the community. However, due to the administrational and financial difficulties, the Hispanic Cultural Center closed its doors in 1990. This led to a need for a new centralized organization, but board, um, but board members realized it would take time before any program would be able to become fully operational. Originally conceived as a new program by the United Way Task Force, uh, the Latino Community Development Agency developed out of, these, out of these series of proposals by other city organizations and gained enough support to begin uh, operating on as its own agency in 1994. The Neighborhood Service Organization and the Community Council of Central Oklahoma's joint proposal was approved and paved the way for LDCA to become autonomous. Such dedication to the maintaining to to the maintaining of a centralized agency demonstrates the increased approval and acceptance of the steadily growing Mexican American community. As central as these organizations are to the community, it, it takes a strong sense of commitment 
from within the community to maintain this degree of support. This is exemplified by Miriam Campos. Miriam Campos was born in 1982 in Zacatecas, Mexico, but at the age of four, she and her family migrated to California. However, that was not the end of her travels. In 1993, Miriam and her family moved uh, once more, this time to Oklahoma in hopes of a better life. She originally hated the idea of moving states, especially since during her sixth grade, which in California, she was on top, the oldest and most respected in school. In Oklahoma, she was at the bottom. However, she used her time in middle school to prepare herself for success in high school. By the time she entered US Grant Cap uh, High School, she was ready to take on the world and she quickly became heavily involved in sports and community service at school. It was at US Grant where Miriam began her work with the Latino Community Development Agency and the Latino Club, which were hosted by LDCA at the high school. The Latino Club at US Grant was an early project which worked to encourage pursuing higher education and community involvement early on, early among high school students. The Latino Community Develop Development Agency would go on to focus by providing community assistance from, from job skill development to immigration to small business support. According to Miriam, the Latino Club and the guidance of Jorge Hernandez, the club's sponsor and mentor, allowed her to grow, experience, and view the world in a new light. From club projects to national conferences, she began to understand the reality of the world that existed outside of school and how she could be part of the change she wished to see in her community. Today, Miriam is a current board member of the Latino Community Development Agency alongside Metro Tech and Fiestas de las Americas, all based out of Oklahoma City. The late 1990s also saw a steady increase in the amount of Mexican, Mexican American students into universities. The push for higher education was seen as an instrument to develop the community from vocational schools to university degrees education was an avenue to improve one situation as well for their as well as for their family this could be seen with a drastic growth in this could be seen with a drastic growth in students attending oklahoma city community college in 1990 only 166 students were enrolled at OCCC, making, making up around 2% of the entire college population. This quickly grew by the turn of the millennium in, by the turn of the millennium. In 2000, 482 students attended OCCC, making up 5% of the college population. This can be attributed to the increase in the overall Hispanic population in Oklahoma, alongside the commitment by organizations to facilitate and encourage increased attendance. The Hispanic Organization to Promote Education held an office within OCCC and sought to reach out into the community in hopes of recruiting students. HOPE worked with prominently low-income families to navigate, help and navigate the enrollment process as well as financial aid paperwork to lessen the burden on such families. The 1990s also saw a new wave of organizing and overall acceptance of the Mexican-American community into the larger Oklahoma community. Jessica Martinez Brooks, Anita Martinez's granddaughter, commented on the slow but gradual recognition by the 1990s. The sense of ambiguity and living in the margins still lingered decades later. Jessica, uh, Jessica mentions the conditions of the Capitol Hill uh, historic district's ghost town aesthetic before small businesses re rejuvenated the neighborhood. As business and activity increased more and more, organizations began to re revive the, the area. Such organizations include Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Department of Human Services Office, Capitol Hill Public Library, and the Oklahoma City Community College Office. In, um, and even El Nacional made this area its operating base. The, the district began to thrive and prosper after a few decades of decline. The Capitol Hill Historic District would gain much of its modern prominence from this, from this time of community and economic growth in the area. The Capitol Hill Main Street was founded in 1997 with the goal and mission to, of the continual cultural and economic growth of this area. The historic Capitol Hill District and its Calle, Calle Dos Cinco has become 
one of the leading landmarks of the Mexican American community and annually hosts large, the largest celebrations of Mexican and other Latin American countries. In, in October of 19, uh, 2019, in October 2019, in October 2019, the historic Capitol Hill District held their 14th annual Fiestas de las Americas Parade and festival with groundbreaking attendance from across the state. Fiestas de las Americas has become one of the largest Hispanic Heritage Month celebrations in the state, in the state of Oklahoma. Fiestas does not serve, does not only serve as a celebration, but as a key community oriented event that serves a multitude of different purposes from entertainment to education to resource management. Fiestas provides a platform for Oklahoma's thriving Hispanic community to come together as community members, leaders, local business people and advocates. University organizations and recruiters also engage and join in on the festivities. One, one of the key missions of Fiesta's parade and festival is to demonstrate the community's pride while providing an ideal source of information for those in need. Community development is at its core. However, when writing about the Mexican American communities and their development, regional and localized circumstances shape and alter each individual differently. The same applies to the, to the community as a whole. This, is, this can easily be observed in the various published studies from, such, from Sanchez to Arredondo. Each have noticed a sense of uniqueness that is often associated with these communities. In Chicago, Mexicanidad became a self-identifying tool that allowed the community to maintain agency among themselves while actively interacting with the larger community. Regardless of time, time of migration, many of these working migrants <clears throat> uh, bring with them their own Mexicanidad with them. Mexicanidad, as, a, as in the Mexicanness discussed by Arredondo, can be traced to the sense of national and ethnic pride among Mexicans. Re regionality, regional pride can also be observed. Mexico in the 19th century had a great deal of regional regionality based on urban and rural areas. Many also identify and relate to these Mexican region, uh, regionality while actively participating within the Mexican American community across the United States. Oklahoma City and its Mexican American community provide an opportune perspective on the community building and development of the late 19th uh, century. Oklahoma provided an ideal central location for many, for such a community to develop. Family ties along, alongside with increased economic growth and cultural expression empowered and facilitated a once small and overlooked community to develop in from within to grow into the second largest ethnic community in Oklahoma. Organizations such as uh, the Hispanic Cultural Center and HOPE all have mission statements that hold a growth and continued development of the community at its core. Similarly, this is, it is always important to acknowledge those individuals who demonstrated commitment to the community. From Anita Martinez to Abel um, Aldez, Various individuals showcased a sense of pride and responsibility and action necessary to gain the recognition that the Mexican American community currently holds. The Oklahoma City Mexican and Mexican American community has grown and stepped from outside the margins into the forefront of what an Oklahoman is. This study aimed to find, trace, acknowledge, as well as demonstrate the significance of uh, of the modern Oklahoma. This study aimed to find, trace, acknowledge, as well as demonstrate the significance of the modern history of Oklahoma's Mexican American community. This study is far from complete. I stated before, there's, there's little written over the Mexican American community in Oklahoma, but that does not mean the history, there is no history to write. Oral histories and personal statements are among the most crucial method of recording the history of it of this community. People have lived the, their entire lives in Oklahoma dating back to the 1940s and have seen and experienced the immense growth and change of the world around them. While progress and change always takes time and patience, the, late, the latter half of the 19th 
of the 20th century completely altered its trajectory. Once referred to as flyover country, Oklahoma and Oklahoma City has taken great leaps to redevelop and change its image across the world. Today, Oklahoma continues to change every day, but it is not always for the positive. Oklahoma City, much like every city in the United States, has a complicated history of whitewashing its personal narrative and ignoring many of the culturally diverse communities within. The 1980 Newcomers to a New Land series attempts to change that, but there is much more, much more work that needs to be done. The long established narrative and frankly antiquated cowboys and Indians narrative still lingers and distracts from much of the growing scholarship to diversify the Oklahoma image. This study is but a small grain of sand to reach that goal, but it is far from finished. The Mexican American community is but one of the multitudes of ethnic and cultural enclaves across Oklahoma. Newcomers to Oklahoma come from every walk of life and with them, their culture and experiences. Like Braid and Golb mentioned, Oklahomans will tackle a challenge head on, not only to survive, but thrive afterwards. This narrative applies to every community within Oklahoma. People just need to be informed.